This hour is brought to you by Jeremy Temple Law Office of Bloomington. Personal injury, criminal, business, whatever you need, Jeremy Temple Law Office will get you taken care of. Well, we're coming to your city. Gonna play our guitars and sing you a country song. We'll all be flying. Well, come on along and welcome aboard Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this Tuesday, March 24th, coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. Jim Coy with you along with Todd O'Leary. Shakes at the wheel, keeping uh, keep us on the track. Great show on tap today. Deron Davis from Hoosier is going to be with us. Also, Chronic Hoosier, we'll talk to him. Uh, actually, there's plenty to talk about. Todd, uh, Todd was feeling under the weather yesterday. Hope you're feeling better somewhat. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. My issues are just headaches. I don't, I, which you know, I've had for many, many years. So no coronavirus, no for coronavirus, him. just, just really bad headaches. Well, a shout out to our friend, Pat Graham, uh, Todd's former teammate, uh, my former high school buddy, uh, I guess, <laughs> uh, but feeling under the weather as well, uh. Yeah, Going Pat, uh, I think a lot of people know now Pat had a heart attack on Saturday um, and had to be taken to the hospital and had a stent put in with, I think, I'm pretty sure Brandy told me he had 100% blockage in one of his arteries. So he had that done and the procedure, you know, uh, I think Indiana fans will remember and be well aware of the fact of Pat's diabetes and he just does not heal very quickly from injuries and things and i don't know if that has anything to do with it. i'm not smart enough to know that or not but uh the surgery is has not worked out exactly like they had hoped and planned so he is going back underneath the knife again today and uh we'll all think about him and say a who's your prayer for pat pat was the best man at my wedding and he's uh he's just always he's he's a good friend <laughs> the fun, funny part about pat is the when I got out of being in trouble a long time ago, you know how a lot of your friends would sugarcoat it and be like, man, are you okay? They, they screwed you and all that. <laughs> Pat looked me dead in the eye and goes, what the f- uh, were you thinking? <laughs> and that's just, that's just how he was. So, I mean, it's, I, you got to love the dude, but um, this is a, it's a tough time. We all are scared about stuff for him. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, everybody keep him in your thoughts and prayers and the family and, uh, get him through that, especially through this difficult time with the, with everything else that's going right. on. It just makes it even that much more dubious or worse, you know, to, to deal with. Uh, and my question, uh, you know, here's, here's the funny part is my questions. I mean, I talked to Brandy at first, his wife, uh, and, and <laughs> my first, probably 75% of my questions were about the hospital and that stuff about what, you know, what are you allowed to do and all that. And the incredibly surprising part is when he was taken by ambulance to the hospital, Brandy followed the ambulance. And when she got to the hospital, they wouldn't let her in. And there are no visitors, no matter what. They don't oh, care wow. what's oh, going on. Holy cow. Yeah. And if you know Pat's mom and dad, you know they are there. I mean, they drive from Floyd Knobs to to uh, Evansville for all of the grandkids' games and everything. I mean, they are they are the ultimate grandparents. And so... I'm sure this is just as difficult on John and Carolyn Graham as it is on on Brandy and and everybody else because you know they would be standing right there beside him, but no one they let Brandy, you know Brandy has some connections, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> they let Brandy go into the hospital for all of about ten minutes, and she got to go in and just uh, give him a hug and kiss after surgery and all that, and then they escorted her right back out. It's just crazy. Well, hopefully he gets out of there ASAP just to get back home and because yeah, no matter yeah, yeah. what, you want to get home and relax. But this is what we talk about, though. You know, what a perfect example of talking about why you need to be serious about the coronavirus, because that bed that Pat's in, that could be taken up by four or five people who who don't take this seriously. Right. Those right. are the guys you Pat's the guys you need in the hospital bed, man. You need room for these people. So that's why everybody has to take this thing seriously, man. Stay homes, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary. Let's don't spread this thing. Let's cap it 
Let's what do they call butt butt the curve? Let's make the curve hit faster. Flat, and flatten the curve. Flatten the curve. Flatten <laughs> yeah. the curve. Yeah. Let's let's get that done. But this that's exactly why right there because they're worried about these uh, health facilities becoming overrun with coronavirus people as sure. opposed to people like Pat who were in there for a, a complete who, series. Yeah, who had patient. no choice. Who didn't have a choice. This is not an elective surgery. So. Yeah, no, you're you're totally right with that, and and it, you know it's Brandy's. That's why I'm why I wasn't kidding. I mean, I asked Brandy more questions about the hospital than I did Pat, uh, but she said it literally was like a ghost town. There was there was hardly anyone in the hospital at all. Obviously, no one walking around. No one other than essential nurses, doctors, and she said there weren't very many patients in very many rooms. It was spooky. Yeah, and it, it is serious. I mean, uh, I talked about this earlier off the air, but a guy named David Edwards, he was a guard for Texas A&M back in the early 90s. He still has the season, single-season assist lead, uh, all-time record for, for the Aggies, uh, almost 900. But he averaged like almost nine assists a game uh, for his career. That's just crazy. He That's was a three-time three -time all -America, or all all Southwestern Conference. That's before it went to the Big 12 or whatever. But the dude averaged 13 and a half points a game, seven and a half assists for a career rather five rebounds all for a career he had he averaged nine assists for that one season that which is crazy but he averaged seven for his career that's nuts. career i mean yeah but he, had he seven twice <laughs> <laughs> well you weren't looking to pass man come <laughs> yeah, on no, no. <laughs> yeah unless that unless that pass was to an orange orange hoop a pretend alley-oop that i really tried to turn into a shot <laughs> Oh man, you guys didn't do that much back in the days, did you? The Hell no, I told you that story about <laughs> stupid Matt Nover one time. <laughs> Threw a bad alley oop to him, and and it didn't work out. And then practice, coach stopped practice and started screaming about it. And I said, we practiced that all summer. <laughs> and he looked, turned to Matt Nover and said, Matt, how many times do you think you guys practiced that? And he said, what would your what would your number be? If, if you coach stops practice, throws a fit, <laughs> and is going crazy, and your teammate just says, he and I practiced that all summer, how many times would come out of your mouth that how many times we practiced that? What would you say? Me? Yeah. If I was guessing, probably. If that scenario is right there. If you're, just, if you're, if you're trying to answer that question, ten. that's ten. exactly what he said, 10. He said 10 times. And the answer needed to be, the answer needed to be 7,000 times. I don't know. We tried it so many times. It's not even funny. And he said, he threw a fit. He said 10, 10 times. You guys practice that 10 times and you think you're, you're perfect. Perfection is set enough. I was just like, man, don't ever put Nova on the back end of a fake story. because The story was made up. To begin with. We had never practiced it at all. Oh man. Uh, the Olympics, uh, I think the Olympics are going to be postponed. It looks yeah. looking like, uh, postponed a year, a year postponement and in Japan, that'll have affect people like Lily King. Uh, I need to get Lily back on the show. I'm gonna try to get that done. I know it's going to be difficult, but, uh, she's been on with us before, but I'd uh, love to get her back on. But yeah, I mean, uh, that's a lot of training. Well, at least they get to train for another year. I'm sure they're happy about that. <laughs> well, I mean, so have they already named the teams? You know, I, mean, I think you had, still got to qualify. qualify and I had think, Hadn't happened yet. I don't think all – I mean, there's probably some that's automatic. Maybe. I don't know how all that stuff happens. It's probably times certain qualifiers, but uh, they've got to be getting close. I mean, it, it was – this. it was start, starting in two months, so, yeah, I guess yeah. so. I mean, it, you know, and it was – I don't know if it's just me because I'm older or what, but when I was a kid, it seemed like the Olympics were a lot bigger deal than what they are now. And postponing the Olympics to me is like – I mean, I don't mean to be a jerk. I know it's very important to those people, and I'm and – I'm, watch it just as intently as everybody else does but it's not like i really look forward to it that much and yeah know. it was i mean i remember the one when it was in montreal the summer olympics that was in 76 i mean i'm really dating myself but i was a little kid but i remember that was when uh hell that's when uh bruce jenner was a man still so that's how <laughs> yeah, long ago that, that was is, that is uh, a long time ago. but uh yeah i remember when he won the decathlon man i mean that was a gigantic deal and but yeah it's not there's there's just there's a lot more stuff on TV now. Yeah, yeah, was, I, that's and that's probably the real answer. I mean, the Olympics used to be a big deal because during when it was on, it was pretty much all that was on. Not that you were forced to watch it, but you know, if you're going to watch sports, that was pretty much it. And nowadays, heck, I can I can flip off the Olympics and watch 75 other channels that have sports on it. Not today, obviously, but 
We know that uh, DJ Carton is leaving Ohio State, but uh, what's that? Ga- the Gaffney kid is leaving. I saw yesterday. Oh yeah, from Ohio State. Going gonna look at his potential pro options after averaging one point five points per game. Yeah. You know, the, the there's probably some weird story behind that. It's probably more of an academic – may not be as much of a choice as what he's pretending like it's a choice. I, you, I'm just – and I don't know that at all. Whenever you see a stupid decision right. like this, there's usually right. a reason right. behind it. There, there is – Not answer. always. There's a reason that they're not putting out there in front of everybody. And, I mean, heck – who, who knows? There could be a million reasons for that. But, you know, that's – Ohio State's kind of taken a hit because he was one of their top recruits in 2019. Obviously, D.J. Carton was one of their top recruits, if not yeah. their top recruit. So, they're losing some yeah, some guys. Yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that is true. I mean, they – and they graduated the the older Wesson kid. So, the, I know Caleb will still be a senior next year. But, you know, um, I, the the – Guard wasn't C.J. Walker. He had to be a senior also, didn't he? Because he transferred. He was a grad transfer in from Florida State. I think so. So yeah, I mean they'll. I don't know what their recruiting class looked like coming in this year, but they're taking a hit for sure. Man, did you see the new Rams logo? I don't know if you're. I, I'm. So, a, I grew. I grew up a Rams fan. Is that so, the one that looks like a Chargers logo? It, it, yeah, it looked, to me it looked like a, a Los Angeles Today TV show or something. It was yeah. like, welcome to L.A. Today or some crap. I was yeah. like, Ew. It was odd. Yeah, I, not, I'm not they digging it, They probably paid millions of dollars to some advertising firm oh, for that, too. I guarantee it. I, yeah, I'm like, just leave it alone. It's fine. Why do you – I don't understand why people feel they have to change something that works. The Rams colors and the, the Ram deal on the helmets, you don't need anything else, man. That's it. But that's my rant. For, hey, we missed Joe Smith's birthday yesterday. Yeah, I know. I, I did see that. I, I saw I that late. So I, I, sent I sent him a message. message. I sent him a message too, but I didn't see it until we didn't. I didn't get to talk about it yesterday. I didn't see that until after the show. So want to shout that out, man. Joe Smith, good dude, good friend of the show uh, on the IU broadcast uh, crew as well. But uh, happy birthday, JoJo, man. We appreciate you. Got that going on. So uh, and Tua throw the ball yesterday for the first time. Really. To, yeah, back at it. So, uh, getting ready for that draft. You got, you got stuff that's still going on. I mean, the, the draft is good. It's going to be weird seeing this draft, though. Again, yeah, all this stuff with nobody, no people. Depending on yeah, depending on when they ha- like. Imagine the coverage of something like that because it's a non sports related thing where they don't have to be there and participate and all right. that. Imagine that if it was on TV, like in the next two weeks, it would be, have a huge rating. I mean, everybody will be, they'll be doing, calling up the number one, and the number one pick is he on, <laughs> he's on face, we're FaceTiming with the number yeah. one pick or yeah. whatever the case. Uh, Alan hit the uh, text line this morning and says, uh, morning guys, among all the issues and compilations, it's great to be all that was yesterday. Nip it in the butt. I missed that one. I he was, Missed that one. I, that what that text was for. Uh, Tim, <laughs> maybe he wants me to shut up again about. No, something. <laughs> no. It's, uh, let's see. Tim says, "Does Michael Penix have a breakout season?" And how about the backfield, Stevie Scott and Samson James? Yeah, that'll be fun next year. I mean, Indiana football—they've got they're returning as much talent as anybody. As a matter of fact, they were returning more talent production than anybody in the Big Ten period, but. Ohio State is a – Ohio. mark this down. Ohio State wins a national championship in the next three years. I was going to say four to be safe, but I think they win a national title in the next three years. Who? Ohio State. They are – they've got – they're bringing in a freaking class right now that is stu- just crazy. Ten top 100 guys. They just got – they're just a factory, and I think they're – because of the coronavirus, a lot of guys committed – Without taking visits to other schools, right? Ohio State was like their top offer, so they just said, ah, "I'll take, I'll take it." So they're going to end up coming out smelling like a rose on that man. But uh, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, you know, it's uh, that'll be one of those scenarios to watch and wait and see. I, I think I said this right when we first started talking about it a couple of weeks ago. But watch and see what the uh, you know, what their after their freshman year and their transfer portal looks like because. They're signing guys over the top of guys right now. And, you know, most of these high recruits want to play right away. But, you know, it's Ohio State. I mean, they are, they should, they're always going to be top 10 in recruiting classes and probably top three or four. 
You ain't lying. Hey, we got a lot more coming up. Up next, Deron Davis is going to join us. Stay tuned. You're listening to Indiana Sports Speed with Coy O'Leary coming to you from the Golf Club at Eagle Point Studios. And we're back right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Speed. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what we'll get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier family for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just stop by 65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could all find me running around in a cream of crimson onesie and a red eye you hat, reminiscent of those worn during the world famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with the Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money saving, just like FDA approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. You're on the line with Jamal Meeks, former Indiana Hoosier. Number 23, 1992. And I'm on the beat with Jim Cole. Today's guest is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry of Sellersburg. You need a million dollar smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you'll get with Reynolds Family Dentistry. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this Tuesday, March 24th. Joined now by Deron Davis, former Hoosier. Deron, how are you, man? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing great, great. Got Todd Larry, former Hoosier, with us here as well. What's up, D? We Hello? still got Deron? There you go. There we go. I thought you lost your There he goes. Yeah, what's up? What's man. up? Man, along a weird, weird time for uh for guys right now. Of course, you, you'd rather be playing ball, but uh, you're not. So, what's going on with Duran right now? How how you deal with all this stuff's going on, man? Man, I'm just trying to keep my mind busy. Uh, I'm just doing. I got some. I got some online classes I'm doing right now. Um, I got this math class I'm in. I'm just. Uh, I'm just trying to stay busy, doing a couple in home workouts. Um, but yeah, I'm not really doing too much, man. I'm just uh, just chilling right now. How do you? Because I know you're you're probably looking forward to, to future doing something in basketball wise. So, or, do you have to work on your own to stay in shape? That's got to be one of the most difficult things for all players right now of all levels to stay yeah. in shape because there's no place to go. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah, like I said, you can't get into any of the gyms right now. Uh, the hardest thing is to you know keep up the shape as far as running. But I mean, there's a lot of in home activities. Coach Cliff does a great job with us, man. He's um. He's posting videos. He's sending um he's sending videos to us. He actually uh 
came over and gave me a band just to do some um, in-home stuff. So, I mean, like I said, we can't do too much, but if you're not one of those guys that likes to, you know, run around campus or something, you know, it's kind of hard to stay in a, a physical shape like that. Todd's a little jealous of you. You finished uh, your career at IU as 10th all-time in field goal percentage at 54.7%, man. Uh, a career that you had to battle through injuries, but still, with all that, to end up 10th all-time in field goal percentage, that's not a bad way to finish. Yeah, man. I mean, I just wanted to, you know, I just I always took good shots. Um, I never really did what I couldn't um, couldn't do. Um, I, I did everything that, you know, I knew I was uh, capable of doing out there on the court. So, yeah, man, I mean, it's an honor to at least, you know, even though the season ended crazy, I mean, at least to, you know, have something in my name, remember some way. So, so hey, Dron, are you, are you still in Bloomington? Or are you back home? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm still in Bloomington, yep. You're still in Bloomington. Are most of the guys still in town? Nah, they um, actually, it's only me and uh, Demizy, Demizy Anderson. He's, he's uh-huh. still here. So, um, but other than that, everybody went home. Did they? Huh. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to get together and play some one-on-one. <laughs> yeah, we'll <do> that. <laughs> That's, yeah, there's not a lot else to do. You have to play virtual one on one, I guess. Uh, exactly. are, and that's a big thing with, uh, I know, college players is, is playing Fortnite, stuff like that. You guys still doing that stuff to keep in touch or to try to pass, break the boredom? Yeah, man. I mean, um, so some of the guys, we yeah, had Fortnite. I'm not a real big Fortnite guy, but we, we jump on Call of Duty a lot. Um, but like I said, people, everybody's in their own cities, um, kind of, you know, doing their own things. Um, I mean, I, the gym here is um, you can't. We can't get into the actual like, for, like you can get into the facility, but you can't get into the actual weight room. So I kind of um, I snuck in this morning, early this morning, and um, got in some shots. But other than that, um, we we won't tell hard. anybody, huh? We won't tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I figure. <laughs> I, I look at it like I look at it like this, man. Like if it, if I'm in the gym by myself, you know, I mean, I should be perfectly fine. So I mean, I, literally, when I get there, there is literally no coaches, no janitors, there's no one in there but me. So I mean, I, I don't think it's. I don't. I think I'll be fine. <laughs> and I know you probably don't know per se exactly what the future holds, but what are you? Are, are you gearing towards certain things? Are you looking towards Europe? Towards G League? Yeah. What, what, what's next uh, for uh, for um, our man Deron Davis? Uh well right now the next the, the most important thing right now is just getting um um dealing with this math class that's that's the whole reason why I'm still in Bloomington. <laughs> so uh I can't that, help you there man I'm still here I gotta uh I gotta pass this math class so I can and, uh, I can I can get this degree um math has been something I've been struggling with. it was the reason why I was late to coming to school um uh my freshman year how I missed the whole my whole freshman summer. And that's because I was dealing with a math class. So, and then now it's my senior year, and I'm dealing with the math class again. Um, so I just want to make sure I pass, get that together. And then I gotta finish my um, I gotta finish my uh, internship. And then after that, uh, I just plan on taking my talents to wherever I can, you know, make some good money if that's overseas. And um, I can just, you know, stack my bread. And then, um, I mean, I'm, I'm using this time, this little six, seven month or whatever, just to, you know, get completely healthy. And I kind of look back on it and kind of wish that I took my the approach like I like Kevin Durant did. He took a whole year off just to, you know, focus on his body and focus on his Achilles. So um, I'm just trying to, you know, work on the little things, trying to strengthen my muscles. My um, my calves are still trying to get back strong from the injury and stuff like that. So I got a lot to work on. So I'm just trying to get back to, you know, my sophomore year and try to get back healthy. I'm, I'm assuming. I know if it was in season or school was still in session. I know you would you'd have the ability to have tutors and things like that. I guess that's one of the things we kind of overlook when we're looking at this whole thing because we're just looking at it from a sports perspective. But in trying to get your degree, like you probably don't have access to tutors or anyone anyone helping you anymore, do you? Yeah, I don't. Um, we usually have like a yeah, um, low. The only person that I have that is actually dedicated, no matter it can be anything, it can. It can be anything. The world can be on fire, and she's still helping us. That's Lorian, uh, low price, man. She, she, she's my rock when it comes to school, man, and she keeps me on track. So that's the whole reason why I'm here, man. She's, she's not, she's not physically um, in the building, but um, and since I'm on an online class, I talk to her a lot. But I stayed here because she's not that far away, and if, if anything, if I really needed some help, she, she can just come over to the house, and we can do work in my living room, like so. Um, yeah, that's so, awesome. Uh, but besides that, we have to do virtual reality, uh, virtual uh, um, tutors. And even if you do that, you know, that costs a little extra through going through the school and stuff like that. So it's a lot of extra stuff that's going on right now. 
you know, I, I talked to Todd, any player I've ever talked to, Duran, and they all, to a man, talk about the academic support they get uh, while at school. I mean, you're, you're hearing the same thing from you that I hear from Todd way back, you know, all the way back to his days. Uh, that is just a, a, a key thing that is always seems like it's been there, that they really help the, the athletes. Yes, they do. Um, and um, Lola's done a tremendous job, man. She she works with – I don't think she, she works with men and women basketball. I think she has one other team. I think it's either uh, – I think it's women's golf maybe. So um, she um, she's she's full-time with us, man. She's she's calling us. I talked to her yesterday about 20 minutes just trying to set up the math class, make sure I was good for this week. So um, she really she's really a rock for us. You mentioned the Achilles uh, injury you suffered, uh, one of the most debilitated, toughest injuries in all of sports, uh, to be honest yeah. with you. And you, you battled back from that, and you, you're still battling back from it. But talk about the difficulties of battling back from that injury. I mean, I know how difficult it was from just watching you battle through that. Yeah. Well, man, like I said, um, so like, it just, it just, especially how my game was, um, I never was the most athletic player on the court, but I was I had ability to play or finish at least above the rim and, and or, you know, be able to move my feet a lot better um, to, you know, put, put myself in a better position to guard people. And so, you know, um, it kind of just limited, it limited my moves. Um, people say that I have great footwork. And once I tore my Achilles, I kind of was not able to be as explosive on some of my post moves. And, you know, I, I kind of pride myself on being creative down there and, and finding angles to score. And, you know, with, you know, without the Achilles, it's kind of hard to do that. So it was, it was both physically and mentally um, draining on me once I'd done it. But I had a great guy, Timmy G, and uh, Dr. Orfeld and all the docs on our team to help me get back from it. Um, I, I do kind of look back on it, like I said, to if I really treated it like Kevin Durant and maybe, you know, sat out a year and then came back, and try to and then trying to fit, um, finish out, I probably would have done a lot better. But I mean, you can't can't dwell on the past. So, like I said, I'm just going to continue to work. Um, and you know, I mean, the coronavirus is kind of like a curse and a blessing. And you know, give me time to you know really focus on me and focus on the little things that I need to uh, make myself healthy as possible. That Achilles injury, obviously uh, difficult to to deal with. And then after your playing days, Ryan from Whitlaw, Make Michigan, hits up on the text line, says if if he does not want to play professionally, time I think he'd be an amazing coach, super in- insightful about the game. Any thoughts about coaching after your playing days are over? Um, uh, I don't know. I may, may maybe <laughs> some, maybe some maybe some AAU. Um, I don't know, but I don't I don't think coaching is really um for me. Um. I definitely, I definitely have a lot of knowledge though of of the game, and I mean, ten years from now, I'm have even more knowledge. So I'm, you know, I'm always, excuse me, I'm always continue to, you know, give give uh give kids um the knowledge that I have, give back to the game. Um, I have people in my life as, as I was growing up that um did the same thing, so I feel like that's important for you know um early kids development. You and Devontae are the last two guys that played for uh, Coach Crean and Coach Miller here. What's it like in, at this level playing for two different coaches in two completely different styles? Yeah. Nah, man, it, it could it could hurt you um, if you don't approach it the right way. Um, Coach Crean ran a style like um, everybody does everything. He was a uh, – he was a uh, – what was the leopard print offense? Um, he just – everybody played everything, you know what I mean? And then Archie comes and he – he focuses mainly on defense. And with Cream, we're putting up 90 points a game, trying to outscore people. And then uh, with Archie, with Coach Archie, we're doing, what, 60, 70, but trying to hold people under 60. So um, it was just two different styles of play, but both great coaches, both great basketball minds. And um, so, yeah, yeah. And, and playing in those two different styles, is that something at least you can take forward with you, having experience in those different areas? Yes, definitely. Um, it's it's unfortunate that um I I tore my Achilles when uh, Coach Archie got here because defense is one of the things that I try to pride myself on. Um, and um, early in the season I had a lot a lot of foul trouble. Um, and you know some of them was I, I had to film. Some of them was terrible calls, but then some of them was just because I was just too slow or I couldn't move because of my injury. And so um, and so then with Crean um. It was just the running gun offense, like one through five. You had, uh, even if you're a big, you need to know all five positions. You never know where you can be at on the uh, on the court. And so, um, I mean, both both coaches taught 
um, different styles, but both coaches had a lot of information. And I mean, you can use use um, both styles anywhere you can go. You can use it overseas with the crane offense, how um, everybody plays positions, how versatile the league is now, and then you know defense. You know defense wins championships. So, what what were some of your fun, funnest moments uh, in your career at IU? I mean, you came from Colorado, which is a a place where we, Indiana fans don't see a lot of guys come from out, the, out west. To be honest with you, but you came, you're Colorado Player of the Year, and uh, come to Indiana, a place that it was known for basketball. But what was your experience like, uh, your career wise here? Um, honestly, man, my career was a little up and down. Um, it didn't go exactly how I thought it was going to go. Uh, I really, the injury really set me back and killed me. Um, but overall, man, I just, I enjoyed the time I've been here. I enjoyed the people and the connections that I have built. Um, and, uh, the, the education, you know, no matter what, like, even, for example, like the Corona, the Corona took away basketball, but I'm not trying to let it take away my education. So, I mean, that's probably the, um, the best thing I got from IU is probably the connections and the education I've got. And I also, I saw that you're, uh, if people want to do a cam, they can get you to do a cameo for them. I, I saw that. Uh, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on cameo cool. now. Yeah, I'm on cameo. Uh, and I'm just using that just, to, again, to, you know, I'm trying to keep my mind busy, not to stay bored and just try to put a little extra money in my pocket, especially with um, all the stuff going on now. So, but yeah, I do cameo. Uh, I do shout outs on there. Um, I'm a, I'm a big cook. I can cook a lot. So, uh, I, I tell people, <laughs> yeah, we can talk about cooking. Um, I like to fish. So I am like, I just try to leave it open and try to have people have fun with it. So, so Deron Davis likes to fish and cook two things. I promise you, I would not have gotten correct if I was given a pre pre-interview <laughs> test uh oh yeah cooking what's your favorite thing to cook man what do you like to cook uh well i'm always if i was like if i was on a date or i was bringing someone home <laughs> oh, um, my go-to meal is uh steak and potatoes with some asparagus um but nowadays i've, I've been eating a lot more fish so like last night i had uh i, I fried some squid and had uh I baked some tilapia and um i um had some shrimp too Listen to Duran, man, going down, five starting it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, so. volleyball coach Steve Aaron, his wife is like a five star chef. You guys should collaborate. Uh, oh, uh, word, yes, I definitely, I definitely do that. <laughs> absolutely. Well, man, I cannot thank you enough, brother. We appreciate you uh, for joining us, and I'd love to have you back on anytime, especially uh, not as much going on. Uh, we'll catch up with you and, and keep keep track with you what's going on with you. Yeah, man, anytime, just let me know. Uh, it's appreciated. Thanks for everything you've done, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Deron, I appreciate you, brother. Have a good one. We'll talk at you soon. All right, thank you. There you go. Deron Davis, yeah. former Hoosier, joining us here on Indiana Sports Beat with Corey O'Leary. Uh, we got plenty more to get to uh, when we come back on the backside of that to the Golf Club Eagle Point Studios. We're back right after that. It's all in my head. Oh, I'm surprised. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's 33 in Clarksville, located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Ryan Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093.
Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the golf club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the golf club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is AJ Moyer. This is Dan Dockett. Hey, this is Michael Lewis. I'm an Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money-saving, just like FDA-approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, this is Jordan Hall, former Indiana Hoosier. Keep up with Indiana Sports on Indiana Sports Beat. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat with Coy O'Leary here on this Tuesday, March 24th. I cannot believe, dude, March is almost over. I can't believe that. That's shocking. I don't know which is more shocking, coronavirus or March is gone. Yeah, this whole this whole year is going to just seem odd because we're not going to have – I mean, there's there's things you usually kind of base – the lost the year. Cha- the season changes and the and what ha- what time of year it is off of and with no March Madness and no Masters tournament and – the NBA playoffs not being at the normal time this whole year is going to seem screwed up. Well, the I whole mean, year is screwed up. Yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna be the lost year. I mean, it's gonna be unbelievable, and people will basically lose a year in essence. Um, yeah, no, you're right. This is gonna screw up records. Think about the sports records. Records are going to be affected. I mean, there's nothing that's not affected by this. It's weird. It, it's. It's uh, it, it, had you had you said, you know, January 1st of this year or any, you know, any time before February when we first started hearing about the coronavirus, had you said there could be something that could stop all sports, not just the ones we watch every day, but national or, or, or I mean, international, uh, worldwide, there, there is no way. Any of us, would, we would have all said the money's too big. We would have all said there's nothing that's going to cancel the NCAA tournament. There's nothing that's going to cancel the NBA season. There is no way we would have the said Olympics. There was something. Yeah, the Olympics. A, a world war. It, it would take a total world war. Um, even that, I mean, it's not going to stop certain places. This has stopped every everything body, yeah. everything. It's crazy. It is. You know, this date, yesterday, uh, it was yesterday's date, actually, Indiana – Beat Kent State back in 2002. I was there in Rupp Arena in, in Lexington. Oh man, they were knocking. We were knocking down threes from everywhere in that game. What were they? Kyle Horton was hot. Fifteen of nineteen, I think they went and behind the three point line. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I sold out Rupp Arena. You that was. I was there as a fan, and I remember I was sitting in the end behind the goal, behind the basket, and I, I remember I gave myself a headache yelling. I never, it's never happened to me in my life at a sporting event. That happened in that game. Um, yeah. Well, actually, no, that I, was that was probably the Duke game there that I got the headache because down seventeen, and then when Dane fouled, <laughs> oh, I can still remember the angst. I, me, you and me pop- both. <laughs> Professed my love to fish in that game. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun couple of days though. But and man, that Kent State game was so much fun just because. It was to go to the Final Four, and they – I don't want to say they put it away early, but they really stomped on Kent State's neck just right off the bat and made, were making shots everywhere. It was and, – And talk about this. These three names, Dane Fife, Kyle Hornsby, and where was it? Jared Odell. Those three names don't exactly strike fear in the hearts of, of 
teams, especially the number one team defending national champion uh, coming in. (laughs) That's not, that's not who you think is going to take that team down. When you look at the rosters, when you look at those rosters and that particular Duke team, um, I mean, that is, that's a game. If they play 20 times, and you know how much I love that team with Coverdale on it and all those. I mean, those guys were just tough. They were Indiana just gritty loses and tough. Indiana loses 19 out of 20 probably. But, yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly what I was going to say. They would lose 19 out of 20. I was going to say 9 out of 10, but that's not even that's not yeah. even enough. <laughs> yeah. They would lose 19 out of 20 times in that game. And, that's, so and they you're should. Looking, they you're should. Looking, you know, well, we, we talk a lot about how our team in 1992 is one of the most talented teams to never win a national championship and that stuff. That That – 2002 Duke team is in that conversation too. I mean, that team was that good. Shane Battier, Carlos yeah. Boozer. I yeah. mean, uh, they, they had that, some. Jason Williams. Jason Williams. I mean, they were that good. The picture of uh, Jay Moye blocking Carlos Boozer is always has been my favorite Agreed. sports photo. I yeah. mean, it is just the fact that knowing that this dude is 6'4, this dude is 6'8, yeah. and it, it's just, it's, it's and, awesome. And for what that, if Mitch. that if that block is in the first minute and a half of the game, it doesn't we mean probably anything. we probably never discuss it again. Yep. But given the fact of what that particular, the timing of what that would have been if that's a basket or a foul or anything else, I mean Indiana loses. It was that important. It's just craziness. Uh, but yeah, now so now our concerts are, are canceled now. So you know we're gonna. I think it was it Garth Brooks is gonna do is supposed to be doing a Facebook concert, which is kind of cool. We'll have to you know if it gets down to it, we're gonna have to start doing some stuff. We'll we'll find, come up with something funky. Gonna go out. I wish that Jordan Halls. I hope that they get to the point to where they can still have their uh, JH One Academy things this summer. We'll be we'll do the show from out there. Uh, you'll be out there on the court shooting. I'll just be on the sideline doing nothing. <laughs> but uh, I talked to, with Jordan yesterday about that, and, and he said he can't wait to get you out there, get some, get, get you working with the shooters, man. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll fix his shot finally. I'll finally get him to shoot it the way he's supposed to shoot it. Who, Jordan? Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, he's, he's been having trouble for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Obviously, he is. He oh, is man. one of the. He's one of the all time. He's one. He's like a Pat Graham ish in that scenario where you give a guy one shot to make it, you know, no defense, no nothing, a game of horse, you give a guy one shot. Jordan's one of those guys that, that you know is going to make it. How many shots do you think that dude's put up in the gym? A lot. You can't, lot. Have, that, you can't have that funky of a technique and, and be a good shooter without having shot it a gazillion times. A gazillion is right. And he's like, like six foot, so he, he had to work harder. It's like a Yogi Ferrell. You got to work harder, a little shorter. Uh, but, man, knocks him down. Then did you know this? Did you know how the Hulls got to Bloomington originally? Huh? Jordan's grandfather was on Bob Knight's staff in 1991, came to Bloomington from Army. 1991 or 71 rather. I was going to say 1991. I would know who this guy is. Right, right. 70. No, he came with Bob Knight on his staff from Army to Bloomington. That is a hidden gem fact because no, I don't think I've ever. I know I've never heard that. Yeah, that was. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's crazy. That's anyway. really cool. Uh, and then of course the whole whole family is such a impact at Bloomington South. His sure. dad works for Adidas. Um, you know, when James Gatto, he's one of the Adidas guys that got got was involved in all that FBI stuff. They fired him, and I think they hired three different guys to do various things that he was doing. One of those is uh, Jordan's dad, JC, um, who was doing that. He works for Adidas. So all kinds of tidbits of information Yep, floating around out there. We're, we're full of it. I wish I had a job with the with Adidas right now. I can promise you that. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> in this day and age. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I, I, everybody had probably had – Concert tickets, you know, all that stuff, all their plans. And so now we're going to do uh, cookouts. And, well, hopefully they get warm soon enough so p- more people can get outside. Um, yeah, I bet a lot of people learn how to play golf this year. They you ain't lying. In the past. You ain't lying. Because that's one of the few places that you can still go. You can still yeah. do something and still respect the social distancing. Even as cold as it was yesterday, I still saw people out here at Eagle Point golfing yesterday. Really? Yep. And as rainy as it's been, man, those are some diehards, man. Yeah. yeah. Plus, 
Plus, they had that great uh, special that they ran. And speaking of, of Eagle Point, they're also that's one of the places that uh, you can get takeout from. Uh, and they they still, as far as I know, they're doing the every deal over twenty bucks gets you two rolls of toilet paper. I don't know if that's still. Uh, I don't think you need it anymore. I was at the, <laughs> I went to the grocery store the other day and they had plenty of toilet paper. So. Plenty. Uh, Shot lots of trees coming down, lots of trees coming yep. down. Yep. So I guess we're good in that shape there. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, the golfing, that's the, another thing. It's been so, the weather's been funky, the, the rain and all that. It's getting warmer, but it's going to be wet. So it's going to be hit and miss trying to get out there on, on, onto the golf course. Yeah. I mean, all the rain that's, that's been here and, and kind of, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's just impatience right now. I mean, if there was NCAA tournament going on, I, we would be welcoming the rain, getting the golf courses in shape. And, you know, th- they need that. And I, I just want some warm weather. I want some consistent warm weather, and then I'll be good. You know, uh, and our, our buddy Dan Dockage, he's, he's in hot water again. I don't know if you saw um, the Scottsburg basketball coach got fired, uh, which was kind of a screwy deal, it seemed like. But I don't know the backstory, so I can't speak on it with any uh knowledge but while all this stuff's going on you know we i think we talked about this scottsburg gets together and they fire their coach uh or didn't renew his contract but dan made some comments that made some people mad so he's got to deal with it yeah 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 uh i won't i'm not gonna repeat the comments but obviously but um you can find those easily but it's just uh, you know like in that in a scenario like that like danny is and and i love danny i have a different feeling about Danny than a lot of people I think because he was such a big part of my career at Indiana so um you know I I've, I think a lot more positively of him than a lot of uh a lot of the stuff I read at least I should say that because I think it do, a lot of people do think positively of him but um you know sometimes he just gets he gets uh he does so many good things and he just gets a little bit too um, animated over a certain scenario. And he probably knows the backstory and there's probably a really good reason why he made whatever statement he made. I don't, I didn't see it, but, but I mean, Danny's Danny is a good person and that's, that's the bottom line to it. I mean, he's not out trying to, he's not trying to, uh, I don't know. I like Danny. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's always been great to me. Uh, But yeah, he, uh, Upset some folks, but that's what he does, man. That's why he's uh, number one in his market and, and all of that. So, but uh, we got a lot more to get to and we'll move on to that. But uh, and we talked about this Rams logo earlier. I grew up, that was my team when I grew up. Man, that sucked. I, and you Oops. mentioned the Chargers, the Rams oh, thing yeah, I mentioned earlier. Yeah. You mentioned the, why they would even get close to that. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. It's like, why? Wow, it's just, there's no reason. And then, then you got Philip Rivers who's coming to the Colts. Uh, I'm surprised the Colts haven't put like little lightning bolts on their on their uh, yeah horseshoes on, on the on side the of the helmet. Right. Yeah, on the on the side of the helmet. Everybody's always got to change everything, which I don't think is necessary. But so now we got that to look forward to. And then next year, uh, the IU football team. I saw let's see Indiana's kickoff. The guy who who's ran their kickoffs for the last year or so he's leaving he's in the transfer portal which they it just there's every year it's, it's a competition when you're a kicker man it's a competition every year and he just got a scholarship last year it was a big thing pat mcafee did this big announcement uh it was kind of a cool video that he made but he's gone already he's in the transfer portal which guy is this uh i forget his name to be honest with you i, I okay. forgot to write it down My um bad. Um, the one who missed Nate, the one, Nate, 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 something from Green. The one Greenwood. who missed. No, he's he's at kickoffs. Nate Snyder. Yeah, Nate so Snyder. It's not the guy who missed the kicks last no, year. No, no, no. He's gone. He graduated. Is it the guy that came in for him? No, this guy just did kickoffs. Oh. No, he didn't. No. No, no, he's a kicker. He, he kicked off. He was the kickoff guy. But anyway, he got a scholarship last year, and now he's he's moving on in the transfer portal. So there's that. Yeah, so everybody's I mean, that, moving on, man. That transfer portal is, I mean, it, it's going to have some positives and some negatives. I mean, there's we're going to, well, already the football team, I think this year we would look at that thing as a negative because it has, it has detoured from the team this year. Well, I wonder what, and this year is going to be a weird year because of all the stuff that we're dealing with with the coronavirus. There's going to be so many people that move around that you're next fall. We're like going, oh wow, he he's here. He went there, right? It's got it's going to be like trading. It's like the Astros or something picking well, up guys. It's, like, oh wow, it's like right now. I mean, you look at you look at the transfer portal. I mean, that's not that's not 
big news in today's world. I mean, everybody's trying to find out coronavirus information and numbers and testing facilities and all the stuff going on. I mean, our lives are turned upside down right now. And somebody from another state going into a transfer portal is probably not going to hit real high on the radar list. Nope, not at all. And not at all. Now, you know, the one thing, and then you got people like, you know, this coronavirus, Bob Knight, he, he's a perfect example of someone who was getting out in his community right. since he got here, which I think has probably been beneficial for him, his for sure. mental state. Now he can't do that. He's got to stay home or, I mean, I'm sure he has a, uh, um, Oh, sessions he has to go to for physical therapy and whatnot. But other than that, a person like that's got to stay home. They can't keep their mind moving right. at home. So that that's, that's so hard on people like that. that we, no doubt. So we we have to. And he's in that people. age range. He's in that age range of. He has to stay know, home. He, he's one. Yeah, he's one of the critical. I'm mean, at seventy nine years old. I mean, he is one of the target people that you're trying to keep healthy and keep away from the virus. Eighty percent of the folks that have been. Uh, uh, passed because of this have been 65 or older yeah. so yeah it's it's that not that it can't affect everybody and obviously it does but uh, obviously the people in the upper range are, are more affected and, and at, at the most danger yep you right so that keeps us in the house but I, i've been staying i mean how what have you been doing have, are, are you staying in i mean i know you've got three kids you have to still deal with too and well the, uh, the easiest part for me, the last three days have been the easiest for me because I've had such a bad headache. I have really just kind of stayed in a dark room and slept like the TV even bothers me right now. So um, it's been pretty easy the last couple of days. I really haven't felt like I missed a whole lot. But, you know, in, on a regular basis, I am not a person that stays home very well. Um, I like to be out doing stuff. And so this is this is torture to me. But yeah. there's people who have it a whole lot worse than me, so I am not complaining. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget to get out and get yourself some takeout if you can. It's Friday, you know, here on this uh, Tuesday. We'll make it takeout Tuesday, I guess. Uh, uh, they, they Dan did takeout Thursday. It just it should be Everybody's takeout every day. Takeout every, day, day every day, yeah. every day, every uh, day. If you can afford it, yeah, hit up uh, wherever you are. If you're in Evansville, listen to us on the ref or. You're in Bloomington or in Southern Indiana, down there by Louisville. There's just Bubba's 33 down that area. You got uh, Yogi's and the Tap and and all the. Won't be too long before groups. we have a new restaurant here at Eagle Point, right? Oh, that's right. This was this the Psalms. Is Psalms, you Psalms is coming in, bringing that so, barbecue place in here. Good, good time to be doing that right now. As a yeah. matter of fact, uh, yep. so they they got that going for them. But uh, yeah, get out and check them out and help. Help the uh, help the people out. Order order something. I've been uh, mostly cooking in as well. I'm like Duran. I'm a. I think I consider myself a good cook, and and I'm going to put that to the test here over the next few days, though, or next several weeks, I guess. Well, I I don't consider myself a good cook, and I have <laughs> yeah, very right. little experience and practice at it. But I can I can toast a bagel, and uh, I can heat something in the microwave up as good as anybody. One of the uh, few things that are still going, you have the UFC, the next UFC fight. Dana White, I saw that he said that that's going to uh, – planning on that going forward. When is uh, it? I think it's in April. Really? Uh, going forward with fans? That fans can't no, no, that. no, no, no fans. No fans. Huh. Um, I'm trying to find that stupid thing that I saw yesterday, but um, – yeah, I think they're still still planning on having that. So he, he yesterday I saw a report. He said he found a place, and the the marquee fight is against a Russian, and so they're thinking that it may be held in Russia. So this is going to be kind of like Rocky. Uh, what was that Rocky Five? Right. Yeah. Where he goes to Russia, and they maybe they start doing some training and uh, going through the the Russian hills and the and, and all that the Ukraine and craziness. Who knows what we're going to see. I, hey, if I was, if I was, how big do you think that UFC match will be, though? Huge! My gosh, I'd get that thing on anywhere you possibly could. Why do you? I guarantee that's why they're doing. They know that this is a freaking gold mine well, for sure. That, that's why I'm, I'm serious. If I was that three on three league, that basketball three on three thing, I'd be trying to get that thing on as fast as possible. Oh, uh, you know they are. Uh, you know, they are. So Todd, Tim's text in says, tell Todd, my wife has the, that headache stuff. She took migraine with caffeine tablets. Another miracle. Miracle. Yeah. N- I, another miracle for NASCAR this weekend from Texas Motor Speedway. 
I don't know. I think uh, are you talking about they're doing uh, simulated races again there, Tim? Are they? I don't know. They, they were. Like they did the other day at, at Homestead, I saw, because I was watching the replay. You got Jeff Gordon and uh, the Mike Joy, who does the regular call. They're calling the race just like it was a regular race. It was weird. It's funny. So were they on simulators at their they own were houses? On, I, I, or, or someplace. They were all in different places on simulators, all racing each places. other. Huh. Racing each other. Interesting. Hey, we got we got a little more coming up. Chronic Hoosier is going to join us to finish the show out here. Stay tuned. We got lots more of that coming up here on Indiana Sports Beat, uh, and we'll be back with it right after this. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle from Indiana Sports Beat. When I'm not covering the Hoosiers, you can find me at Bubba's Thirty Three in Clarksville. Located on the northeast corner of I-65 at Veterans Parkway, Bubba's 33 has hand-tossed pizzas, bold burgers, and ice-cold beer from a select list of local craft brewers. An incredible food selection, all made fresh daily. Whether you're meeting the team for that post-win meal in the family dining area or meeting friends for happy hour to watch the game on one of Bubba's 50 TVs, Bubba's 33 in Clarksville. Pizza, burgers, beer. We all want a winning smile for those championship photos, and that's exactly what you will get at Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Reynolds Family Dentistry has been serving the dental needs of Hoosier families for over 30 years. Let doctors Roger and Jay Reynolds take care of your family. Just off of I-65 at 809 South Indiana Avenue in Sellersburg. Call 812-246-3368. That's Reynolds Family Dentistry, 812-246-3368. I'm Rain Shaddy, and I'm a Hoosier. As a toddler, you could always find me running around in a cream and crimson onesie and a red IU hat reminiscent of those worn during the world-famous William Tell timeout, shouting, Go Hoosiers! Like many other alum, I chose to make Bloomington my home. As a civic and alumni leader, I have become very knowledgeable about our community and would love to share my insights with you as your realtor. Find me on Facebook or call or text me, Rain Shaddy, with FC Tucker Bloomington Realtors at 765-623-9093. Now that warm weather has arrived, it's time to hit the links, and there's no better place than the Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. Voted best golf course by the readers of the Bloomington Herald Times, the Golf Club at Eagle Point is under new ownership, has new fairways and bunkers, and it's open to the public. When the round's over, there's cold beer and a full menu at the Eagle Point Pub and Bistro. Call 812-824-1100 to make a tea time. That's 812-824-1100. The Golf Club at Eagle Point in Bloomington. This is A.J. Moyer. This is Dan Docker. Hey, this is Michael Lewis, former Indiana basketball player. This is Indiana football coach. Tom Allen. This is Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat. You can always like and follow us on Facebook. Always follow the show rebroadcast on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify. The DailyHoosier.com is a great place to sign up for each and every day. Or, of course, on 97.7 The Ref in Evansville. Some of the best sounds you'll ever hear are generic, safe, effective, even money saving, just like FDA approved generic drugs. Even if they don't come in the exact same color or shape as their brand name equivalents, they have the same key ingredients and go through a rigorous review process. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist today and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. Generics are safe, effective, and can save you money. You'll like the sound of that. Hey, it's Michael Lewis, former Indiana University player and current UCLA assistant basketball coach, and you're listening to Indiana Sports Beat. Tuesday, March 24th, and joined now by Chronic Hoosier. Chronic, how are you, man? I am doing well, man, all things considered. it's uh, I guess it's day zero of Indiana lockdown. Um, so we're, we're managing the best we can. Uh, sun's out. It's a beautiful day, so we got that going for us. 
Yeah, lots going on in Bloomington, trying to uh, get peeps out to uh, get some carry out to uh, places, whether it's uh, the Tap or Yogi's or Buffalo's or wherever. Uh, I know you've been heading that effort, so uh, congratulations on that. But yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a community type thing now. Wherever you live, uh, communities coming together. No, nah, it's 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 pretty wild right now. I mean, this is uh, this is a community that's kind of unique in our area, in as much as it's you know, squarely centered around the, uh, the university as far as our local economy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always rough having been in business in this town for about 20 years. Whenever, uh, whenever the students leave for breaks, uh, that often means that a lot of the permanent residents take off as well. Uh, so there's always kind of a downturn that, that follows those periods. But to have this, uh, you know, this whole pandemic fall upon us right in the middle of that, and then, you know, wipe out the remainder of the, uh, at least the in-class academic calendar for the year. Uh, it's kind of a one-two punch that I, I really, really hope, um, you know, some of these places that make Bloomington worth living in, the bars, the restaurants, the shops, the cafes, uh, I really hope that we're able to to find some creative ways to keep everybody here when this thing blows over. Uh, because as I've been tweeting throughout the week, I, I really can't imagine Bloomington without some of these establishments. Um being a part of our community, man, and making it what it is. Uh, and it's certainly going to be weird enough when you take, you know, approximately 55,000 students out of the mix just to see what's left and how all that works here in this uh, this new day for all of us. Speaking of a new day, there's a new day in Indiana with, and as far as the athletics director. Scott Dolson, uh, we, I know we, we've spoken since then, but due to technical difficulties, we haven't been able to get you on. So uh, for the first time since a new AD, Scott Dolson's in place, a uh, guy that a lot of people know. Uh, he's been around the program for a long time. No, absolutely. And I, I think more than anything, that was uh, probably one of the greatest strengths of the hire, one of the best attributes is just – the power of the continuity. Uh, this is this is a guy who's basically worked his entire professional career for the university. I, I said it last week. This is uh, this is someone short of maybe McRobbie's personal assistant uh, who has the greatest rolodex of anybody you're ever going to find in Bloomington. I mean, he he absolutely knows anybody and everybody. Uh, he's got all the keys to all the doors. You know, he can pretty much make it happen. When you look across 17th Street at the the reformation of what the IU athletics complex looks like, uh, all the new facilities that have been added. Um, you know, once soccer's complete, they will have, they will have done every single sport, uh, facilities wise, as far as making upgrades, improvements, or outright replacement. And, you know, centering all of those efforts has been, has been Scott Dalton, even before he joined Fred at, at the athletic department when he was heading the IU foundation, uh, kind of spearheading some of those fundraising efforts. So, um, you know, just a testament to how important he's been to the university. Uh, I, I think it's at the same time, it's going to be a very known quantity at the same time, too, from folks I've talked to. Uh, you get the sense that he, he has a, a clear uh, vision for where he wants athletics to be, uh, how he wants it to run. That's, you know, that's not radically different from, you know, from what uh, Fred Glass had implemented and executed over the, uh, the last decade plus. Uh, but I think folks should expect to see it uniquely Dolson. So uh, at the end of the day, I think it's, it's a great hire. Um, you know, obviously, this is somebody who's, whose roots go far, far back with the basketball program. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of folks that I know have been particularly concerned about the health of the basketball program and the direction. And, you know, it often comes down to this dichotomous choice between, you know, is it a football guy or is it a basketball guy? Uh, I think it's safe to say with Dolson, uh, you know, you're going to have a great steward for both of your, you know, your big revenue generating programs, but you're also getting somebody who knows what it, what Indiana basketball is about. You know, he was a student manager for Bob Knight back in the eighties. Um, you know, he's seen that entire arc uh, that, that the programs followed over the last three decades. And uh, I, I would imagine he, as well as anybody has a pretty solid uh, vision for where he would like it to be, how to get there. And what a weird time, uh, obviously, to be coming into a position like that uh, in the middle of something that nobody else has ever experienced. So uh, it's not like that they're gonna, that's going to put uh, pressure on him in that regard. But, wow, what a time to come into a new job. No, absolutely. And I, this, this, this is unprecedented times. Um, you know, it's, it's been fascinating to see the, the social media world, the media world as a whole, um, at least the sports corner of it, have to find itself pivoting here. And, you know, we've, as we enter the weeks now where we should be heading into the second weekend of the, the basketball tournament, obviously with no games to be played anymore. 
um, a lot of folks trying to find creative ways to distract ourselves. Uh, but even beyond that, I think just keep some semblance of, of normality and, and, and sanity and, you know, protecting our mental health. But I, I think it's also going to highlight a couple of things. It's uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of traditional revenue streams that are no longer available, whether it be box offices, um, television contracts right now, or anybody's guess, just because there's going to have to be so much reshuffling. I mean, even the Olympics right now is, is facing the prospect that it's not going to be a lot of television contracts because of postponement could interfere with football. Uh, so, I mean, there's so many moving pieces right now as far as what the future looks like for not just college athletics, but colleges as a whole. Uh, you know, we are still not anywhere close to being in a place where we can say definitively that there's going to be students back on campus when the uh, when the fall semester begins, uh, or that even if they are, that we're going to be at a point, you know, from the public health standpoint, where they're going to let tens of thousands of people in, in you know, in, in confined spaces and shared quarters such as that. So it's 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 really fascinating right now to see how they're trying to adapt. To some of these times, you know, you see the, uh, the strength coaches right now doing everything they can to stay engaged over social media. Um, it would be real interesting to see if and when the coaches can actually start doing some workouts with the players, when some recruiting can happen again. Uh, I imagine a lot of them are probably grinding more tape than they ever have in their life right now, trying to do everything they can to stay sharp. So it's going to be incumbent upon the leaders, uh, such as Dolphin, to find ways to facilitate uh, success in this, in this new day uh, and empower their, their people to uh, to continue to to achieve the mission that they've set in front of them. And that's you know develop student athletes um, holistically uh, and and have them ready to compete at the highest level. So it's going to be fascinating to see how all that plays out with all the restrictions that have been you know placed on society here. Uh, but uh, you know one thing that I keep coming back to through all these times uh, as you know things just seem to be cascading on us uh, you know rapidly and, and profoundly is what an amazing time to be at this proximity to this particular university uh, with all of its resources, all of its assets, all of the talent and the different disciplines uh, that it specializes and focuses in. Um, You've got some of the the, the world's leading experts in everything from medicine to education uh, to physical health and and public policy and, you know, all the way down the line technology, uh, which I think is going to become uh, an ever-increasing part of our new lives now and just how amazing it is to have all those resources right in your backyard, have all those minds kind of pooling together and figuring out, you know, what the path forward for all of us is right now. Yeah. The Olympics, uh, probably going to be postponed. Uh, we're in that process now where that has really changed. They, they tried not to do that, but, uh, that is, uh, as well as all the other sports that we know of that, that, that have been going on in our life. So we're going to have to find some different things, uh, to do in that regard, I guess, uh, different things to watch too, uh, I guess, or you can watch old sports. A lot of people have been doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're watching everything from classic rewinds to marble racing to, uh, you know, simulated games on, on, on sports, pl- on, you know, entertainment platforms and whatnot. Uh, I will say I had this conversation with one of my childhood buddies, you know, this is, this is exactly the conditions though, that led Indiana to become, uh, you know, the preeminent state when it comes to basketball, it was, uh, it was driven by, by isolation. Uh, it was driven by congregating in small numbers. Uh, you know, it, it was a sport that was perfectly suited for the more rural, the more dispersed, uh, schools and populations that Indiana featured uh, when the game was really taking hold here. So, you know, it's, it's something that, that, that kids can go out. And that's been one of the things I've loved seeing as I, as I do kind of crisscross it about town is that, you know, you still see kids and probably more so than ever right now, because I think a lot of them are biting at the bit to, uh, to get outdoors a little bit, but, you know, shooting hoops in driveways, uh, you know, pairing up and heading over to the park. Um, it's, it's just a, it's such a welcome sight for me personally. Uh, j- just to see that, to hear the ball bouncing, um, you know, as the grass starts to turn green around us, um, as crazy and upended as everything has become, it's it's something familiar. It's you know, it's the heartbeat of my of my community. It's it's great to hear it right now. So hopefully, a lot of kids will take advantage of it and uh, you know, sharpen their tools because uh, eventually, man, this is going to lift and we're going to get back together in the gyms that we love. And uh, I, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to feel it. Uh, before I forget, uh, shout out to Joe Smith. Uh, yesterday was his birthday. We missed that yesterday. So uh, happy birthday to Joe Smith, one of the great ones. 
Joe shares. I, there's a lot of folks I didn't realize share a birthday with my daughter. I've now got a teenager. Oh, well, happy birthday. Is, happy birthday to it, her. Incredibly wild to me right now, but it's also uh, it's also totally fascinating to see just not, not just how fast it's gone, but, you know, her birth kind of marks uh, kind of my whole entrance into the whole IU sphere. So it's. It's it's wild to see that progression. They uh, my kids actually Googled me this weekend uh, in their boredom, and it was, it was. I'll tell you what, man, it made for some really interesting and a little bit awkward conversations. But you know, it's certainly something they've been aware of for for you know pretty much all of their lives, at least their cognitive lives now. Uh, but she's officially reached the age two where she can kind of you know okay boomer me. Uh, she's reading some of my horrible takes and profiles. <laughs> well, we appreciate him here each and every week. Uh, it's good to have you back, man. It's good to be back on, man. It's it's uh, it's it's good to take our minds off some of the uh, some of the rigors and the concerns of the day because you know it's it, it, sports has always been kind of ancillary to everything else, but it's it's only when you lose it you realize just what a what a hole it fills inside of us all uh, and the ways in which it brings us together. You know, the fact that we're still able to talk about it, even with uh, with all these these troubles and issues facing us right now. Uh, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy, can you know, to continue uh, to have these conversations with Hoosiers all over um, and keep those, those bonds strong, man. Well, hopefully next week we'll have a, a conversation about some things that uh, Hoosier fans can do for fun. We'll have to come up with some stuff. <laughs> Tell you what, man, my kids are making up a list, but most of them I would not endorse. But we'll see if we can't find something a little more constructive. <laughs> All right, brother, we appreciate you. Chronic Hoosier joining us each and every week. Thank you, sir. They'd be good. Thanks for having me, Jim. You bet. There he is, uh, the great Chronic Hoosier, joining us here on Indiana Sports Speed with Coyle and Larry on this Tuesday. Uh, that's going to pretty much wrap up today's show. Got lots more coming up this week. Don't know when, who's going to be where, but working on uh, getting Devontae on, Trey Calloway. Uh, just keep trying to bring you guys great guests each and every day as we uh, try to provide some entertainment during this uh, weird, weird time. But uh, we appreciate everybody continuing to follow along with us we appreciate you and we'll be back tomorrow with uh more todd and more jake and more myself until then from the golf company of point studios it's jim coyle and i will see you on the radio